Hi there, thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to be taking you through part two of my cot build. Uh, this takes us from the raw framework of the cot ends, finishing all the panelling off, final bits of shaping before uh, finishing with a pro like an oil-based product. This actually ended up being a Rubio Monocoat, uh, but I'll get onto that later. If you like it, please like and subscribe. Um, drop me a comment as well. I hope you enjoy. So this is what we're working towards, uh, two panelled ends uh, with some nice shaping to finish. So here's an image of the basic cot ends with the tapered legs. We were now ready to make some panels. So I started out with some uh, rough sawn oak, cut it roughly to size, uh, just so it is easier to pass through uh, the planer. Um, I planed one face first and then ran it through the thickness uh, one by one to get the more consistent uh, size and thickness. I then started breaking down those boards that I'd just planed uh, into smaller pieces to the correct size of the panel widths. Once I had the, all the correct widths for the wood, I started splitting it all into two um, to get the correct thickness of the panels. And so I blitzed through these using my micro jig uh, push block. So before cutting all the panels to the correct length, I needed to make some rebates in them so they all slatted together. The original plan was to use the router table to cut the rebates out, but I found I had a much better result running two sides through the table saw and then finishing up using the router. So here they all are, all interlocking together, uh, ready to be fitted to the main framework. Before I could fit the panels to the framework, I had to prep the framework to accept the panels. By using the router, I was able to channel out some grooves um, which would hold the panels once in place uh, so there was no movement uh, either side. Once all the fitment channels are done and all the panels are cut to the right size, I was able to start uh, dry fitting them, just checking that they slotted in just how I wanted. As you can see, there's a little bit of a gap right at the top. I had to split one of the panels uh, to make like a half rail that fitted each side uh, just to get the fit just right, which brought us to this roughly finished uh, end panel. Because the panels weren't actually tongue and groove, they were just rebated together. Um, I decided to make some cross braces that fit in the main framework. I designed the cross braces so they would uh, fit into the framework but still allow the panels to uh, slide in behind them. They ended up being quite tight but this was a positive because it meant there was no uh, back and forth movement from the panels. It supported the panels from behind and then the panels also kept them nice and tight and meant they weren't going to go anywhere uh, once they were in. So here's what I mean, just slides in perfect and then just a little click and that's it nice and secure. And there you have it, the two sides, one without the cross braces, the other one with, which just adds a bit of strength to that panelling. I really wanted to add a bit of detail to the ends of the posts, uh, so what I'd ended up doing is using a bowl and dray bit with a uh, router fence on the end of the router, and it just meant I could do a 360 groove all the way around the tops of these posts just to add a bit of character to it. So you can see the edges uh, of the posts are already rounded over. I used a round over bit to go all the way down. The acrylic plate really helps stabilize the router as I did this. And I just worked away at it, taking a little bit off each time. Uh, it just prevented any tear out or burning, um, putting the router under too much strain. Uh, that seemed to get the best results. Um, I added roundovers to all the ends as well, just to give it that little bit more elegance. And then repeated it all again on the other three posts. It really did pay off uh, taking my time on the end grain of the posts uh, when I was adding a chamfer. Just taking off a little bit each time uh, and setting the router to the correct speed really reduced the amount of burning uh, and any tear out. So just kept flipping them, uh, taking a little bit off each time. So you'll be able to see here the difference between normal speed and then uh, just really sped up. Uh, most woodworking videos you'll see uh, sped up because actually the process is quite time consuming um, and it'd just be really boring to watch it all at normal speed. So the end panel's complete. Um, fitted to the framework, all the shaping done, um, 
I did quite a bit of sanding to get it all ready, um, all dry fit together, marked up. The final stage to the cot ends was gluing up the uh, joints. Um, so for this, I used an offset tenon to the mortise, popped a dowel pin in and then hammered it home. There's a lot of tension in these, but um, fairly hefty dowel pins. So uh, they've pulled the joint nice and tight. Uh, it's all finished off with a contrasting walnut wedge um, just for a bit of aesthetics. And it just turned out really nice, really uh, clean. So the next stage is the side cot rails. Um, so this will be more mortise and tenon joinery, uh, followed by making lots of rails for the cot sides. Thanks again for tuning in. Um, join me on the next one and I'll take you through the next stage.